Thanks, Rob. So what we're going to do now is give a, a bit of an introduction, a bit of an overview of the existing geological knowledge that we have in the area. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's not a lot. We don't really know, and that's part of why we're, we're doing this. Um, I should say, I guess, that what I'm about to talk about now in terms of a regional context, a lot of this information is being pulled from other sources. So um, there's a lot of information here done, uh, taken from the, the West Australian Survey, who have recently done a drilling program in the Western Australian side of the uh, Kumbana province. Um, and then additional sources around the place, including some of our own work. Um, what I'm going to do is give a, a bit of a regional context, so hopefully set the scene, give a bit of an idea. This is pretty speculative, but um, the, the data that we've got is giving us hints and it's pointing us in this direction. Um, following me, we're going to have Tom, who's going to give us a talk more specifically on the, um, <clears throat> the South Australian section and basically some new work we've done with the recently collected aeromagnetic data. Um, following that, we've also got um, Clive Foss, one of our collaborators from CSIRO. Clive's been doing um, quite a lot of magnetic, mod not, uh, magnetic modelling, looking at the, uh, those anomalies, particularly in that southwestern corner. So his talk will be very interesting. Uh, we've also got Stefan Till, our resident MT expert. He's going to give us an update on where we're at in the west of the state with the MT and some of the information that's coming out of that. And then I'm going to come back just to bore you again and basically talk about where the survey is going, so what our future programs are, where we're at in terms of our pre-competitive data collection and where we're going with that. So what I'm going to do now is give you a bit of an overview of the Kumpana province. Hopefully you all know where it is. You've, you've come here interested in the region, so hopefully you'll realise that the Kumpana province as a whole realistically is this area south of the Musgraves, west of the Gawler and then uh, east of the, the, um, the Mundrabilla Shear Zone and the Madura province. It's, it's a big area. This area is in excess of 200,000 square kilometres. Realistically, the areas that we're talking about <clears throat> are down in the, in the south. Uh, the region is extensively covered by basins, including the Officer Basin, uh, the Bight Basins, the Euclid Basin, the Denman over here on the margin of the Gawler. So the area that realistically we're interested in is down here in the south, where the basement depths are shallower. Um, basically because of that unknown in terms of how thick the cover is and the lack of exploration and stratigraphic drilling that's been done in the area, we really don't know a lot about it. So what Steve said at the start that this is a big frontier area, he's absolutely right. Um, realistically, we basically have half a dozen cord basement intersections. Uh, five of those are the new data collected by the GSWA and one is an existing petroleum well at Malibu 1. We have eight um, chip or percussion um, intersections, which mostly include petroleum drilling, places like 81 up on the railway line and these couple of holes way up out here, right in the middle of the Officer Basin. And you know, we're talking here a kilometer, uh, two and a half kilometers to three kilometers through the basin there. Um, and then we have a number back in the, in the 80s, there was a little bit of exploration done looking at these. These holes went down to about 300 meters or thereabouts and into, ended in a basalt. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about those coming up. In terms of where we're going in terms of the regional geology and the picture that's coming out from the existing geochronology and the reanalysis of some of the existing holes that we've got, we basically come up with, this is a, so this is a regional time, sp time space plot including the Western Gawler, the Kampana province, the Musgraves and the Madura province to the west. So looking here at the Kampana province, we're basically looking at about five events. And so this is what I'm going to talk about very briefly today is what it looks like. These five main events that have affected this, this um, Kumpana basement. There is an inferred event pre-1900. Now this, is, this only comes from isotopic and geochemical constraints. There's no known rocks of this age. Um, that there's potentially an oceanic precursor, an oceanic crustal basement um, forming somewhere between about 2000 to 1900 million years. Uh, this was subsequently intruded, reworked by this uh, Torgana Super Suite. Following that, the Underwidgee, uh, the Mundini Super Suite, and then the, uh, the Basalts, which we now know are probably Neoproterozoic. Um, 
these names have come from the Western Australians, so they've named the units that they've, uh, they've been looking at. I'm not sure how formally they've named those yet, but that's what they are. So, starting at the oldest, we don't actually have any direct evidence of this, um, this basement. There's no uh, known <coughs> crust at this age, uh, except for one drill hole in the northern Gawler, which is about 1930. But um, through isotopic evidence and geochemical evidence, basically, uh, Chris Kirkland has argued that all of the, the Musgrave province, uh, so this is actually, this is a, an epsilon half, uh, sorry, not an epsilon, this is an initial half, hafnium plot from zircons, uh, and this is, includes the Campana province data, which is new data that we've, the GSSA has recently collected, um, data from the St. Peter suite, which is also new data that we've collected, the Eastern Musgraves, which is also new data we've collected and not published yet, and then a compilation of the Western Musgrave data. As you can see from this, there's basically the potential to put a, a crustal evolution curve through this data that traces back to about somewhere between 2,000 and 1,900 million years. So geochemically and isotopically, you can argue that there's a juvenile crustal input probably beginning sometime around about 1950, something like that. Um, and that's then seen subsequent reworking and subsequent juvenile inputs, um, more mantle input that we'll talk about in a bit. Um, in terms of distribution, these, uh, so I'm going to put up a couple of these sort of distribution maps. This is, as you know, this is based on a, basically a dozen drill holes and a bunch of stuff in places like the Musgraves. It's not well constrained, so that's why they're uh, PowerPoint big blue lines. But basically, we now have evidence that there's potentially a 1900 oceanic basement to the Musgrave province, the Kupana, the Madura, part of the St. Peter suite, and potentially up into places like the Warumpi and up underneath the Amadeus Basin as well. So it's quite a large body of crust that this stuff has then subsequently just been reworked and reprocessed um, through the ages. Going, getting to the, the Kupana province and the ages we see there, the Tulgana Super Suite. So this is um, the oldest age uh, dates that have come out of the West Australian data. It's around about somewhere between 1640 and about 1600. Um, these ages are identical to ages that we are getting from the, Western Mus uh, the Eastern Musgrave province and also they overlap with that of the St. Peter Suite. Um, basically, there's, there's quite a large suite of rocks ranging from gabbros through to granites. Um, in terms of the chemistry, there's uh, basically each of these suites uh, overlap. They look, they look the same. Chemically, they look the same. Um, they're calc alkaline, metal luminous, uh, high, high K um, granites, they, are, they basically show strong fractionation trends um, in their trace element plots. It shows that it's basically, uh, the, these are co-magmatic, co-genetic granites going from the more mafic components all the way through the fel to the felsics. Um, and interestingly, they plot within, the, within the, the volcanic arc granite field on these pierce plots. They also contain um, relative enrichments in the large iron lithophile elements and light rare earths, uh, strong depletions in the high fuel strength elements, things like titanium, phosphorus, um, niobium. And these are all typical of volcanic arc setting. So the consensus is basically that chemically these rocks look like they are forming in a primitive arc, um, probably an oceanic arc setting. Isotopically, again, these rocks uh, there's one sitting in here, so the Kumpana, the St. Peter Suite, and Musgrave Province rocks, isotopically they overlap, um, and it basically looks like potentially a reworking, or a reworking, so there's a, a crustal evolution curve and the near dimming here would run back to about 1950 as well, so the um, a near dimming crustal evolution curve would run down somewhere through there. Um, so these rocks can be derived from reworking of that earlier oceanic crust with some radiogenic input. So basically we're getting new mantle coming into this system in what looks like an arc setting. In terms of the distribution, it's fairly loose, but obviously the St. Peter Suite down here in the southwestern Gawler, the entire Kumpana province, there is evidence um, from the West Australian side that it's, uh, this basement is seen in all of their cores. Um, we're also getting it from some basement sections we have from a few drill holes down here. And 
um, obviously up into the eastern Musgraves here. And the extent of that into the west is, is unknown. I think it may even be pushed a little bit further to the west now. Though. I think the West Australians have got a, a new date, which is around about the 1600. Um, the following event is this Underwidgee supersuite, or the Malaby, um, the, the granitic ice from Malaby 1. Um, we don't know a lot about this. It's poorly constrained. It's intersected in two drill holes over here in the, the west, in the sort of the, the far western part of the, the Kumpana zone and one from down here at Malaby 1. Um, it doesn't seem, we don't know of it anywhere else. It seems to be constrained to the Campana province and we basically, we don't know a lot about it. Um, these rocks tend to be more, more felsic, so sort of monzonites to, to granites. They're strongly deformed. Um, and we can actually, you can actually see, we have this core out there for you guys to go and have a look at. This is one of our basement sections. Um, Geochemically, there's two suites. They're um, the sort of a, a medium K suite and a more of a, a high K to Shoshanitic suite. They're all fairly strongly magnesium um, to, to slightly more ferroin for some of the Malaby 1 samples. Peraluminous to metaluminous. Um, and they're, they're fairly enriched. So they're enriched in the, the large iron lithophiles, they're enriched in the high field strength elements, they're enriched in the light rare earths. Um, relative depletions in things like calcium and strontium, they have these typical sort of bat wing um, rare earth pots. They're typical of A-type granites. So, you know, we would, we would say these are A-type granites and lo and behold, they plot in this sort of transitional um, to A-type granite fields on, the, on these sort of um, differentiation plots. Um, they tend to plot up into the, heading up into the within plate granite um, plots of Pierce. So isotopically, again, these can be, um, this can be achieved by recycling that older crust as well. Um, they sit again towards the, uh, towards the lower end of that um, crustal evolution curve which would run through here. Um, but they run to more radiogenic compositions as well. So there's another juvenile input here. So the, um, there's another mantle input basically going on in this one here. Um, what's interesting, I guess, with these is they do have these strong A-type characteristics, but they are strongly magnesium, which is not what you would normally expect from A-types. They tend to be iron-rich, more ferroin. Um, potentially, that means it's sourcing a more oxidised source. So this, again, gives a bit of a hint back to that potential for a subduction-related, subduction-modified crust at the 1600 event, that these rocks are remelting of this juvenile subduction-related um, basaltic crust. Um, the next one is, is the big one. So this is, is now been called the Maralinga event. Um, this is a major thermal event occurring throughout basically the wedge between the west, the north and the south Australian Craton. Um, this correlates with the Musgravian orogeny that we see up in the Musgraves, stage two of the Albany Fraser. Um, we know that this is an extended period of high temperature to ultra high temperature metamorphism, elevated geothermal gradient metamorphism. And it represents a major period of felsic magmatism, predominantly felsic magmatism. So this includes the Esperance super suite in the Albany Fraser, the Pitanjara super suite in the Musgraves and the Mudini super suite in the Madura and the Kumpana provinces. Um, it's very diverse. It ranges from locally derived anatectic melts of the crust through to, um, through to basically high temperature melting of lower crust A-type granites. Um, what's interesting from the Western Australian data is that the, some of the, the granites that they've intersected, um, they are quite different than some of the other um, pit sweet type granites and things around the place in that <clears throat> they're, um, they're Shoshanites. So they actually intersected true, what look like true um, felsic to Mafic Shoshanites. Um, so I'll get to that in a second, I guess. So again, some more geochemistry. These, these granites are typically, um, they're high, high in alkalis. They're high, high K, um, they're ferroin. They are basically classed as A-type granites. And they show these strong trends in things like titanium and phosphorus, strong enrichments towards the Mafic, typical of the Charnakite series sort of um, dry, A-type anhydrous melts. 
they generally plot here again within these sort of within plate granites. I guess the interesting the thing to point out here is some of these um, blue ones here from the Campana, which tend down to more magnesium compositions. These are these um, the Shoshanites that we're talking about here. These tend to be similarly enriched as the others in terms of the high field strength elements, titanium, phosphorus, um, also in the large iron lithophiles. Um, but they tend to these more magnesium compositions. They also tend to have flat um, europium anomalies, suggesting that there's um, either they're, they're either sourcing a relatively oxidised um, source or there's no feldspar fractionation going on in their development. And their rare earth trends seem to suggest fairly deep melting, so melting you know, with a garnet stable residuum. Isotopically again, these rocks are formed, they, they can be formed pretty much purely through recycling of that, that same 1600 to 1900 million year crust. Um, they do tend to run, particularly in the Kumpani here, run to more juvenile compositions. So again, there is likely a, a major um, radiogenic component, a major mantle component going into these rocks. It's likely or potentially an asthenospheric component here. And the interpretation for such a, a massive um, thermal event, a massive um, melting event, is potentially, you're talking about major lithospheric destabilisation, lithospheric extension and asthenospheric upwelling. And it's likely that it's during this event that the region was effectively cratinised, um, and that probably is what stopped the closure of the West and the North Australian cratons. Um, the, final, the final one is the, uh, this basaltic magmatism. So there's a couple of drill holes intersected, intersected in, the, in the South Australian side of the Campana around the magnetic anomalies here from KN1, uh, the CD holes and the BN holes that intersect um, a basaltic layer which sits beneath the, um, the sediments of the Bight Basin, the Laguna Formation and the Madura Formations um, and overlie the basement. Um, the relationship between these, um, these basalts and the underlying potentially mafic intrusions is not clear. Um, and Clive will probably talk a little bit more about that coming up. We have, um, we have dated these. So I had an honours student working last year who dated these and, and we have dated them. It was SMND dating, 2.0 it's a bit It's a bit loose, but it does point to them being near Proterozoic in age. So, Part of the same sister as things like the Armada Dolorite, the Gairdna Dolorite. Um, so it, it puts it, it extends the bounds basically of this, the Willuran um, Igneous province, the large Mafic province associated with the development of the Centralian Super Basin and um, continent breakup. Um, we also have a few of these holes out here for you to have a look at later on. Some of these granites, as you can see, they're, they're variably altered. Um, there's there's brecciation probably associated with flow and deposition of these basalts. In terms of the extent, again, uh, this is a very, very large igneous event associated with that basin development. Geochemically, um, these basalts are, are enriched in iron. They're generally tholeitic. Uh, there is a, a low-key, more typical tholeitic suite, which tend to have these more flat, rare earth profiles, typical more of a mantle composition. And then there's uh, a bit of an odd bunch out here, which are more high K, light rare earth enriched um, with relative depletions in high field strength elements. Um, this can either be coming from reworking of that same uh, 1600 um, subduction modified crust, or it may be a later, um, a later alteration effect. Isotopically, these, uh, these basalts in the Kumpana province tend to be a little bit more unradiogenic than you would expect. They seem to be more evolved. Um, they lie pretty much just under the base of that crustal evolution curve for those rocks. What that means is potentially, well, potentially we haven't seen a more evolved component in these rocks here, or there's a, there's a a small amount of a more evolved crustal component going into these. One possibility would be something like the Gawler Cratton, 
and this may be to do with the late stages of that Mundini um, Maralinga event and effectively closure of some of that system. So we may have actually under thrust a little bit of gawler into this area. We're looking into that as long as, as part of our studies with the, the gawler seismic line um, and there'll be more information about that coming out soon. So to give a bit of a sum up, um, it looks like basically we have an oceanic crust forming between the, the north, the western and the south Australian cratons sometime between about 2,000 and 1,900 million years um, developed as part of this continued rifting process, probably as the South, South Australian and Mawson continent were rifting away from the North Australian craton at the time. Um, this then began to close, and it closed by ocean-ocean subduction initiated outboard of the Gawler on a passive margin outboard of the Gawler craton, with the Gawler being upper plate, so subduction in underneath the Gawler, generating the St Peter Suite, the Torgana Super Suite, the Eastern Musgraves, and this potentially goes up into things like the, the Warumpi province, where you have, the, again, these sort of 1600 events there. And also there are rocks down in Terra Daly land, the Rosh X, there's a couple of outcrops down there, which have also got a St. Peter Sweet Age and Cac Alkaline chemistry. So potentially we're talking a, a, a major subduction system developed along that margin of the, the South Australian Craton, effectively beginning to close the South Australian and the West Australian Cratons back together. Um, at 1500, we have this sort of enigmatic um, this, uh, extensional event, generation of within plate A type magmas, whether this is something to do with post orogenic collapse after this arc development or whether it's more to do with something like generation of a back arc, where if we have the arc stepping progressively westwards, as we would um, expect to see going into down into the sort of the 1400 and the Laguna arc and things that the Western Australians have been talking about now in the Madura province. Um, then between 1200 and about 1120, the entire region underwent a significant thermal event, um, high grade metamorphism. Um, we've got probably predominantly extensional system, uh, stenospheric upwelling, high geothermal gradient metamorphism, and a huge amount of these high K, high iron, A-type granites um, intruding through the entire Campana province, the Musgrave province, the Albany Fraser, um, right down into, into Antarctica, the Windmill Islands, places like that. Subsequent to that, we had an, a, re, a renewed phase of extension um, associated with the, the beginning of um, supercontinent breakup, the deposition of the um, Centralian super basin, and um, basically basaltic magmatism in the area, which is associated with other events, including the Armitage and again the Dolorite events and things, the beta basalt around the place. So these are the sources that I've cobbled all of this information together. Um, I should say again, a lot of the geochemical analysis has come from the West Australians at the moment because unfortunately we don't have a lot of data ourselves, but I'm gonna talk about that a bit later about where we're going with that. And, um, and how potentially you guys can help. So, don't worry about that. Uh, I'll pass on now to Tom, and he can talk a little bit more specifically about the South Australian part. 